and this session is about the proofs that the Bible is God's Word and God and heaven and hell are real so this is okay and someone just asked a question how can we do discipleship to pretenders or hypocrites okay then is then it's not discipleship then it's uh, evangelism or confrontation or counseling helping them with the problem so we just guide them to find out the problems guide them to find out you know uh, do they really believe in Jesus and if they're not following Jesus and what could happen uh, so do they believe that they have to face God and if they because I'm answering a question how can we do discipleship to pretenders or hypocrites so we don't do discipleship to them this is counseling or confrontation uh, then we guide them to honest, uh, to s let them know God loves them, they are important, and then ask them, uh, th are they aware of some problems that they have? Uh, if they don't admit it and we know it, then we can s show them the proofs that they have certain problems. And if they don't want to admit, then that means they, they're not ready to face the sins, and then they, we have to have counseling to help them to to face the problem and uh, and if they don't we tell them that uh, you know God loves you and then if you obey God and trust in God and repent then God's blessings will come to you if not uh, you can face God's judgment do you want to face God's judgment or his blessings okay now we uh, okay now if you have more questions you can send to me but please send to me sooner every time send it sooner so that when I start, I know that there is a question there, okay? Okay, now we go to the proofs that the Bible is God's Word and God and heaven and hell are real. Now, this is important so that we know that we are believing in the God who created the universe, that we really will go to heaven one day, and also when we do evangelism, we can tell people that there are proofs that God is real. So here... I will present some proofs okay the first point a the accurate prophecies in the Bible proves that the Bible is God's Word first there are accurate prophecies in the Bible and these prophecies were written long before they were fulfilled Psalm 22 verse 14 now this is prophecy about the crucifixion of Jesus and it was 1,000 years before Jesus was crucified so here I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint my heart is like wax it has melted within me my strength is dried up like a pot, pot shirt and my tongue clings to my jaws and you have brought me to the dust of death for dogs have surrounded me the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me they pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. Okay, let's go through this. Now, first, David never was put to death. This never happened to him. Nobody ever pierced his hands or feet. Nobody did this to him. And I would say he probably was in a special vision that he experienced the crucifixion of Jesus. So he used I, I, what happened to me. And God told him to write this down. This is an accurate prophecy of Jesus' crucifixion. And when David wrote it, he might not even know that he was writing about Jesus. He was just writing what he experienced or what God told him to write down. And he experienced this pain of Jesus. So I, I'm poured out like water. That means his blood comes out. That, uh, that all his blood has, has been poured out. And my bones are all of joint. Now this is figurative language because he was hanging, Jesus was hanging on the cross when it was hanging on the cross, then all the joints feel like there is pain. There is there's great pain. And so it's like it's pulling out of joint. And my heart is like wax. The heart is melting. The heart has no more strength. 
and uh, my string to dry up like a pot shirt. Pot shirt is a broken uh, clay pots that is broken pieces. So my strength is dry up, it's all dry. And my tongue clings to my jaws because my mouth is all dry. So my tongue cannot move freely, Cling, it clings to my jaws. And you have brought me to the dust of death. And so here is dying. And it has never happened to David that he was not put to death by people. He died naturally. And, but Jesus was the one who was put to death by the people. For dogs have surrounded me, the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. So this described the, the wicked people. They've surrounded me and closed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. They cut through my hands and my feet. And I can count my bones. Now this is also figurative language because all the bones are aching. Like if our back is aching, we can feel the bones in the back. And then if our legs are also aching, then we can feel the bones in the leg. And if every part is aching, then we, feel, we can feel every bone. Naturally, we don't feel, you know, we don't say, oh, I feel something in my arm. You know, I don't feel anything. Uh, but then when the person is in pain, then the whole person is feeling this pain. So all the joints, all the bones are suffering. And then um, they look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. So they divide all the garments. Uh, now, this happened to Jesus, that his garments were divided. And this never happened to David. Come, uh, they divide my garments and for my clothing, they cast lots. So for the inner clothing, they cast lots to divide the inner clothing. And now this prophecy has a special part because there was no crucifixion at the time of this prophecy. Let's look at the, down below here. B. Crucifixion was invented more than 400 years later. So after 1,000 years, uh, 1,000 years before Jesus' time, David prophesied that. And it was 400 years later that there was crucifixion. So it was 400 years later that there was such a thing as piercing the hands and the feet. But David already prophesied that. And a passage prophesied bleeding to death. So all the blood is poured out. And uh, the joints in pain and the heart weakening and the body drying up, piercing of the hands and feet and the garments divided and then by casting lots. So uh, all the detail about the crucifixion is uh, is prophesied there. Okay, and then this is another prophecy. Daniel 9, 24 is very important prophecy. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seventy seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublesome times. And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. War will continue until the end, and desolations have been decreed. So here, this prophecy about the 70 weeks is very accurate prophecy about the coming of Jesus Christ to be crucified and then the destruction of Jerusalem and then the war after that. Okay, let's look at that. 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. To finish the transgression, here to means to end the transgression, to end our sins, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, that uh, Jesus will pay for the price of our sins, 
to bring an everlasting righteousness that we have everlasting righteousness and to seal up vision and prophecy and to fulfill uh, seal up here should mean to fulfill these visions and prophecy and to anoint the ho most holy one to anoint the Christ the Christ will be anointed so this is prophesying the Christ who is to come so anoint uh, Christ or Messiah means the anointed one so anointed the most holy one most holy so it cannot be a person it has to be God himself coming to become man know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince so that from the time to re restore and build Jerusalem because at that time of this prophecy Jerusalem has been destroyed so it was prophesied that that there will be a decree the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince the anointed one the Prince to come there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks now this weeks here when we count the time it looks like it's seven years so seven times seven years and seven times 62 years that is 69 times 7 so it's the 70 weeks and then here we talk about the 69 weeks and then the street will be rebuilt again and the wall even in troublesome times the wall will be rebuilt and after 62 weeks the Messiah will be cut off now it's paradoxical the Messiah will come to save the people but he himself will be killed he will be cut off but not for himself not for himself he was cut off for the people and the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary so the people of the prince this is about the Roman uh, Roman prince the Roman Emperor so the soldiers of the Roman Emperor will come and destroy the city and the sanctuary so after the Messiah is cut off after the Messiah to cut, cut off then the city Jerusalem and the sanctuary will be destroyed and the end the end of it shall be with a flood war will continue until the end so there will be war until the end and desolations have been decreed so here it talks about that um, from the time the command to rebuild Jerusalem the command to rebuild restore and re uh, to build Jerusalem until Messiah there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks that means it's 69 weeks that's 483 years and then it will be built again in troublesome time and after this 62 weeks the Messiah will be killed and after he is killed then uh, the Roman soldiers will come and destroy the city and the sanctuary now here it doesn't say the Romans but later we found out that it was the Romans who will come to destroy the city and the sanctuary and then there will be a flood a war will continue so there will be war uh, and and then the desolations have been decreed have been ordered so from the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem to the anointing of Messiah there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks that is 7 times 7 plus 62 times 7 that is 69 times 7 so 7 plus 62 is 69 69 times 9 is 483 so believed to be 483 years and then from the command to restore and rebuild to rebuild Jerusalem to the anointing of the Messiah there will be seven weeks and 70 62 weeks that is 7 times 7 plus 62 times 7 that's 69 times 9 time I'm sorry this is wrong 69 times 7 that's 483 years believed to be 483 years and Ezra 9 9 but he extended mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Persia to revive us to repair the house of our Lord of our God to rebuild his ruins and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem so Ezra was commanded by the king of Persia to go back to rebuild uh, the temple and 
his main work was to rebuild the temple, but here he added this line, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. So when he built the temple, maybe he built some walls of the city also. So that was the decree to start to rebuild Jerusalem. That, I mean, even though it was not mainly rebuilding the, uh, the city of Jerusalem, it was mainly rebuilding the temple, but uh, they would they probably rebuilt some walls there. Um, so Christ was anointed by the Holy Spirit when he was baptized. Now this happened, Ezra was 457 BC before Christ. And Jesus was baptized, the anointing of the Holy One uh, was when he was baptized by the Holy Spirit, by John the Baptist at the age of 30, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And the year of the Lord is devised by a monk, Dionysius Exiguus. This is a monk who has this idea of forming a calendar, counting from the time of Jesus' birth, counting that as year one. And so that's called AD. But when he counted the time, he made a mistake. Christ you know, supposedly should be born in 1 AD. There is no 0 AD, it's 1 AD. And Christ should be born about, so because of the mistake, so Christ should be born about 3 to 5 BC. So it was not accurate. So Christ's anointing is about 26 AD when he was 30 years old. He was 30 years old because it's uh, the mistake of the calculation. So he should be uh, anointed at about at age of 30 and uh, at 26 AD. So 457, that's the year when Ezra returned to rebuild Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple and then some walls of Jerusalem, plus 26. So before Christ, there was 457 years. And after Christ was born, there was 26 years. So before Christ was born, 457. After Christ was born, 26 years. You add it together, it's 483 years. That's 69 times 7. So this fulfilled the prophecy from the command to restore and build Jerusalem to the anointing of the Messiah. There were exactly 69 times 7, 483 years. So the Bible prophesied the time of Jesus coming, the time of his anointing, that he was baptized by, the, by John the Baptist and also uh, anointed by the Holy Spirit. Okay, and then Daniel 9.26, And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, the end of it shall be with a flood. War will continue until the end, and desolations have been decreed. So then the Messiah shall be cut off. He will be killed, and the people here would be Romans. When the fulfillment, the time of fulfillment, we know that is the Romans uh, of the prince, the Roman emperor, came to destroy Jerusalem and the sanctuary, and this was fulfilled in 70 AD. So after Jesus was crucified, within after 40 years, that's one generation, within one generation, then Jerusalem was destroyed. And this fulfilled that prophecy that the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So the people of the prince of Roman, the Rome, uh, Roman Empire, shall come and destroy the city. So this prophecy in Daniel 9, 24 to 26 talk about from the time of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem to the time of the anointing of Christ is uh, 69 times 7, says 483 years. So that prophecy is very accurate. And then he will be killed. So that's another part of the prophecy. And then there will be a war from a, uh, a group of people from a king to come and destroy Jerusalem. And then there will be war after that, and that will be the Middle East Wars, that there are continually wars 
in the Middle East. So then in 1926 that, that there will be war will continue until the end. So war will continue until the end and desolations were decreed. The Israelites have gone through war. The Holocaust, the Holocaust is the killing of six million Jews by Hitler in the Second World War, the Holocaust. And the Middle East problems and terrorist attacks, all this, they even use children to attack, uh, to kill. And they tell them, tell the children, if you are killed when you are fighting for their, for their Allah, then they will go to heaven directly. So that was a lie. And then the description of the heaven to them is there will be many virgins serving you in heaven. That's uh, what they teach the people. And then so, so, they, um, so they're willing to fight. And then here you see that um, the number of terrorist attack through uh, the centuries Oh, this is only from 1970 to 2016 that the war, uh, the number of um, terrorist attack increased greatly. So this is a problem that has been happening in the world. So this is fulfillment of prophecies that desolations have been for decreed. And then here is a second prophecy. Okay, so we have talked about first the prophecy of the crucifixion of Jesus. Second, about the 70 weeks. Now, we just talked about the 69 weeks. There was a last week, but that's not part of our, our discussion here. And then the, this third uh, prophecy here. Behold, I send my messenger. Now here is talking about John the Baptist. And he will prepare the way before me. Now, it's very interesting. The passage is talking about God himself. God will send a, 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 a prepare the way for God. So here is telling me, telling us that Jesus is God before me. Behold, I send my messenger. He will and he will prepare the way before me. And the Bible has said clearly that it was John the Baptist who prepared the way of Jesus. So it's. Jesus, who is God, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to the, his temple. So the Lord that you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. So he's saying, I'm coming to the temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, that I will be the messenger of the covenant. Covenant, it will be the new covenant that Jesus will come and form the new covenant with us. In whom you delight, and then you'll be happy with that. So this passage talk about that God himself will suddenly appear in the temple, suddenly come to his the temple. And then it's God himself. And I will prepare, God will prepare a messenger before him. And then uh, the Lord who comes is the messenger of the covenant. He will uh, start a covenant with the people. Okay, and behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So the Lord of hosts says that, behold, he is coming. So it's the Lord of hosts who is speaking. Behold, he is coming. So God said that he will send his messenger before him. God will send his messenger before God himself. And then the Lord, the messenger of the covenant, will come to his temple. So he will come to the temple. The Lord is God. The Lord means God in uh, Hebrew, Adonai. Uh, is my Lord. Whenever the Israelites read the Bible and they read the word Yahweh, instead of reading Yahweh, they will read Adonai, my Lord, because Yahweh to them is a holy name. They dare not read it. So they read Adonai. That's the Lord. The Lord is God. He is the messenger of the new covenant that he will uh, be the one who deliver the new covenant God's messenger who prepared the way before God is John the Baptist. There will be John the Baptist who prepared the way. And B, the Lord will suddenly come to his temple. The temple was rebuilt in 457 BC. Now that was what was prophesied in Daniel 9, 24 
to 26 that there will be a decree to rebuild the temple and uh, to, uh, to rebuild the city so uh, the temple was rebuilt in 457 BC and by the time of Jesus it will be very old that you know normally we don't see a 457 year old building and it will be very old but God moved the heart of Herod the Great to rebuild the temple Herod the Great is not the Emperor he is the king of a part of the Roman Emperor Empire and he is a very um, cruel man he killed many people but God moved him to rebuild the temple to please the Jews Herod the Great killed the baby boys in and around Jerusalem uh, Bethlehem when Jesus was born when the wise men came from the east they asked Herod where is the king that's born to you and Herod was very jealous and they asked uh, the, uh, the high priests and the scribes where will Christ be born and then they said it will be born in Bethlehem and then King Herod told uh, the wise men so when you find the king come back to me and tell me and then his intention was to kill the king uh, of Judah but then uh, the wise men was were told in a dream not to return and then and then they left and then King Herod was very angry and he killed all the babies all the baby boys under the age at or under the age of two he killed commanded the killing of all these babies and this was fulfilled by Herod the Great who was the one who was so cruel and this is the man who rebuilt the temple starting about 19 to 20 BC before Jesus was born now actually if Jesus was born, Jesus was born about 3 to 5 BC so um, Herod the Great killed the baby boys in around Bethlehem. He killed three of his sons. He is a cruel man. And his wife, he killed his wife. And his mother-in-law, he was jealous of people. And then he, when he suspected anyone of taking his throne, he would kill them. Or he did not like them, he would kill them. He started to rebuild and enlarge the temple at 19 to 20 BC, just ready to prepare for Jesus suddenly coming to the temple so the temple was built already when Jesus went if Jesus had been born years earlier it would be a very very old temple if Jesus was born much later Jerusalem would have been destroyed there was just a narrow gap of time so uh, 19 years before uh, 19 years BC Herod start to build the temple it takes years because this is a large temple and has many large very huge rocks hundreds of tons hundreds of weighing hundreds of tons and then so it takes a lot of work to rebuild the temple and then Jesus went into the temple and then he warned the people one day these stones will not lie on one another. The temple will be destroyed. And then, so Jesus was crucified at about 30 AD, and then 70 AD, Jerusalem was destroyed. So within this time, Jesus came. If he came too early, the temple would be very old. If he came later, Jerusalem would have been destroyed. And so, the fulfillment of prophecy was very accurate according to the prophecy the prophecy was very accurate to prophesy everything about Jesus okay now here I show you now this stone of the temple could weigh about 600 tons if anyone has a chance to go to uh, Jerusalem you can there is uh, uh, you can plan ahead of time and plan a trip to go uh, underneath but now you don't have to go there you can just go on the internet and search for the underground tunnel in a in a temple uh, of Jerusalem 
and you can see it. So you can travel to anywhere in the world by using the internet. And this stone would weigh about 600 tons. Imagine how can they move it? They don't have modern machines. How can they move it? It's very, very difficult. Okay, now this is another prophecy. Genesis 35, 9. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephra, that is Bethlehem. Now this is another prophecy about the death of the babies, the killing of the babies in, uh, in Bethlehem. So Rachel died on the way to Bethlehem. In Jeremiah 31, 15, Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Now this is a little uh, in detail and I hope you have patience to understand this and uh, and also I will send you the send you the PDF and then you can read this over yourself okay now so this is about 1900 years before Jesus time Rachel died and he was buried on the way to Bethlehem and then about 500 BC 500 something BC 600 BC, Jeremiah prophesied that a voice was heard in Ramah, that's in the area of Bethlehem, uh, lamentation that they are crying and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children. Now Rachel has died already for 1,300 1, years already. She has died already. Why did Jeremiah said that the Lord the Lord said that she will be weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more, because the children are no more, they are killed. And then Matthew 2.16, talking about the fulfillment of this prophecy, Then Herod put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all, the dist all its districts from two years old and under according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled, was, was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. So Matthew put this together and said that, Herod killed all the male babies from two years old and under. According to the time he had determined from the wise man. So this was fulfilled, uh, the prophecy, the, the prophecy was fulfilled that was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet saying a voice was heard in Ramah. In Ramah was the district of Bethlehem. A voice was heard in Ramah. They were crying. Rachel was weeping. Now why was Rachel weeping? Because Rachel's tomb was on the way to Bethlehem. And Rachel is the mother of Israel. Rachel is the wife of Jacob, who was changed to be called Israel. So Rachel was the mother of Israel. And she was buried on the way to Bethlehem. And so it just happened that she was buried there. And then there, she, you know, figuratively, she could see the, all the babies being killed. They were no more. So she refused to be comforted. So she represented the mothers there. The mothers there in Bethlehem, they were crying and they refused to be comforted when their baby boys were killed. So this is what happened and how it was fulfilled. And the interesting thing is, Rachel was just buried in the right place. And then Jeremiah did not know what's going to happen in the future. Just said that Rachel was crying for her babies because they were no more. But for Jeremiah, he really did not understand unless God told him. He did not understand 
how come Rachel is crying? Rachel has already died. He, Rachel has already died for a long time. How can he be? How can she be crying? But she, he might not understand that this is figurative speaking. That this is Rachel representing the mother of Israel. That the mother also represent all the mothers of Israel seeing the babies being dead. So she being the is mother of Israel seeing the babies dead and she was crying and representing all the ba ma ma mothers there they were crying. So Rachel was the mother of Israel and she was buried on the way to Bethlehem in about 2000 BC. In about 300 BC Jeremiah Oh, I'm sorry, this is wrong. This is not 300. This is about 600 BC. And uh, Rachel was buried about nine, 1900. I'm sorry about that. 1900 BC. And then in about 600 BC, Jeremiah prophesied that Rachel will weep for her children because they are no more. At Jeremiah's time, Rachel had died for 1300 years already. Humanly speaking, it does not make sense. You know, when Jeremiah made a prophecy, it was 1300 years later for him to say that Rachel would cry because her children are no more. When Herod the Great killed the baby boys in and around Bethlehem and Rachel's tomb was on the way to Bethlehem, Rachel weeping for her children is symbolical of her being the mother of Israel weeping for all the baby boys killed in Bethlehem. Humanly speaking, Jeremiah would not want to prophesy about Rachel weeping for the babies because it does not make sense. It does not make sense that Rachel was buried on the way to Bethlehem. And she was the mother of Israel. So this prophecy makes sense that and is very accurate when it is fulfilled by Herod the Great killing the babies there. So Herod the Great fulfilled two prophecies. He fulfilled the prophecy of rebuilding a temple to prepare the way of the Lord coming suddenly to the temple. And then he also fulfilled the prophecy that Jeremiah said that Rachel would be weeping for the babies because they are no more. And so this is Herod the Great who fulfilled that prophecy to kill the babies. This shows that God knows what will happen in the future and he can prophesy in a way that seems to be illogical and yet it is fulfilled accurately. So it seems to not to make sense but when it's fulfilled then we can see that it's an accurate prophecy of the Bible. So this is one important proof that the Bible is God's Word. There is no other book in the whole world that has prophecies like that. Now there are people who make predictions but predictions they are general. But in the Bible, the prophecies are accurate. Just now we saw that Jesus' hands and feet will be pierced and Jesus was the descendant of David who will be the Christ. And his hands and feet will be pierced and he will be put to death. And the clothing will be divided and then the cast light for the inner clothing. So all this was very accurate. And also the time of his coming from the time of Ezra to be given the order to rebuild the temple and then perhaps part of the Jerusalem will be 457 BC to the time when Christ was baptized, uh, anointed by the Holy Spirit was 483 years. So it's very accurate prophecy and also after that Jerusalem will be destroyed and there will be wars after that. Uh, so that's a very accurate prophecy. And then here, Rachel had died and was buried on the way to Bethlehem. And Jeremiah, 1300 years later, prophesied that Rachel was weeping for her children because they were no more. And then, uh, so Rachel was the mother of Israel. It's like she represents the mother present there crying for the babies and they refuse to be comforted. Now it doesn't make sense because Rachel has already died 1300 years when Jeremiah made the prophecy. So these prophecies show that God has everything in control, the whole world in control. 
And there are many other prophecies, like, for instance, now we see the prophecy, the fulfillment of the prophecy of the plagues. Jesus said, before the end time, there will be many earthquakes, many wars, uh, many disturbances. People in many parts of the world are fighting against each other. There are rebellions, and then there are uh, plagues. This uh, COVID-19 is one, um, and there will be more coming. So the Bible has many accurate prophecies to let us know that is the Word of God. So we can tell people, now in a simple way, you can just say 1,000 years before Jesus was born, when at the time there was no crucifixion, the Bible already said that Jesus' hands and feet will be pierced and his clothing will be divided. So he has no clothing on the cross. So Jesus took the shame of us, our sins and our shame on the cross and the crucifixion was not invented until uh, more than 300 years later. So the Bible has, you know, prophesied this, all this accurately ahead of time. Um, <clears throat> so we know that it's God's Word. And also the Bible said that Jesus will suddenly appear and it's Herod the Great who rebuilt the temple to prepare for Him to come. And also uh, the time of Jesus coming, that uh, from the time of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem to the time of the anointing of Jesus will be 69 times 7. That's 483 years. And Jesus came after that, uh, after the decree of the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And He came and He was killed and then the Romans came and destroyed Jerusalem. This was all prophesied in uh, Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 26. And then there was war after that. There's continual war uh, in Israel and in the Middle East. So this shows that the Bible really is very accurate, has many accurate prophecies that this is the Word of God. That we know that what the Bible says is true. Okay? Now also the Bible talk about, this is another proof, the Bible talks about recent scientific findings proves that the Bible is God's Word. 